Hi guys, in that video I like to talk about all the pros and cons of driving an EV. So if you think about to buy an EV or you just bought an EV, that will be a massive um, gainer for you to listen to the whole videos. We have five categories we like to touch. It's the connectivity, it's the range, it's fueling your car versus charging your car, it's the cost associated and latest and the most important thing will be the user experience. I'm Patrick, I will be your host for today and welcome to Gentleman's World. Let's start with point one, connectivity. The cool thing to drive an EV is that you have a lot of connectivity features. You can steer your car mainly with your app. So you can make, for example, navigation routing up front where you can put in charging station. You can have all, you know, like usage consumption on your car. You can open close the car. You can preheat it, stuff like that. Yes, some of the guest cars also having this in the meanwhile. But anyhow, you know, like that's a big advantage you're getting with an EV. The only thing which I would recommend is when you're having an app while you're consistently looking into your car, always keep in mind when you're waking up the car that you also use energy with it. Yeah, So don't do that too often, but otherwise I have to say these are pretty cool features which we developed with the EVs and that's a big gainer for everybody. Guys, you're the greatest community, so don't forget to like and subscribe and comment to my channel. I really appreciate all your support. The good thing is when you're doing this, you not miss out any cool content from my side. I get pushed through to the YouTube world more and get to see more often. And this motivates me to create another cool videos for you as well. Thank you so much for your for support. Talking about range and consumption. And here we have some really cons which we need to address. Yeah? Because with an EV car, in principle, you drive between 20 to 80 percent. Yeah, normally you go with 20 percent already charging. Or at least you're looking for a charging station. Yeah, and normally because the charging itself, yeah, has a charging curve, which occurs in between 20 to 80 percent. It's the maximum efficiency what you get out. You know, like by charging and the quickest one. That's why you normally charge it up to 80 percent and not further. Um, when you're going to a, a charging station. Of course, when you, when you charge at home and everything, then it shouldn't be an issue at all. Charge it to 100% when you have a longer range. But anyhow, this is something you need to take into consideration. So if you're taking up, for example, the Fisco Ocean 1 into consideration, which has a range of 360 miles, and even that, you know, like is something which is made in the laboratory, you can say that you can, on a day-to-day -day usage, deduct already 20% due to the fact that you're normally not using the full energy package. There's another thing which is a very big con when we're talking about consumption range. In winter time, your EV uses way more energy. That's just based because of the heating of the car and it's not only the heating of the inside, yeah, because normally we have heat pumps or other electrical devices which heats up the car in an EV. Where vice versa to a fuel or diesel car, the engine heating up the inner part of the car. So this costs a lot of energy. But there's also another thing which costs energy, especially in winter time, is the heating of the battery. Because when you like to have a full capacity of your battery, it needs to get warm because normally the batteries have the best function at 20 degrees. So imagine you have, and we, we talk here about degrees and not Fahrenheit, yeah? Um, because the EVs, um, the battery is then best functional and uses less energy. So you need to heat them up and this also takes um, more energy. Also, when you're driving in winter times, which is equal to fuels, um, short distance, then of course, due to the fact that you need it heated up, you need more energy. Um, the pro with it is the energy normally is cheaper. Yeah, and you can charge at home or maybe on your walk or whatever. Anyhow, and it's good for the environmental because you don't have so much CO2 stuff which is coming out of your car and stuff like that. My tip is here, when you're driving in winter times, yeah, always try to charge your car at home. Keep it in the garage, yeah, that it's always warm because this gives you an extra space and you don't need to pre-warm your car so much and you get a longer range. Yeah? Um, also, when you charge your car in winter time, you will not get the full power of charging due to the fact that the battery is not 
um, warm enough. Normally when you're going to a charging station, a lot of manufacturers already make a preheating because they know you go charging, then it goes still a little bit quicker, but in winter time, also the charging infrastructure does not give you the full consumption, yeah? at least here in Europe. So as I said, my tip is always to be aware of in winter time, store your car in the garage, keep it already, you know, like plugged in while you preheat the car, and then you go in and you get a bigger range. This diary reflects already in point three. How is it fueling the car against charging the car? So fueling our normal car gets quicker. That's something which is 100% for sure. The infrastructure for um, gas stations also quite big, more or less worldwide. Yeah, so I'm talking about um, the European countries, but also, you know, like in the US, you have a lot of superchargers from Tesla, for example, or there are a lot of, you know, like providers you have. Um, my tip here is that you're always going to have a card from the best provider because you can save a lot of money. Normally, the energy is cheaper as fuel. And there are a couple of advantages. Yeah? Infrastructure charging now is getting much better. So you have, um, for example, the advantage that a lot of companies offering already that you can charge on their site. So even when you do visits as a sales guy or you as an employee, you can charge while you're walking on your um, um, workplace, yeah? Um, you can charge your car in parking slots. You don't pay for the parking, you just pay for the charging, which is then quite cheap. You also save money when you're going into cities. So imagine how cool this is. You're going for lunch or you're going for a dinner and everything will be covered um, um, for the charging and you're getting back to a car which is more or less fully charged. That's a big advantage. Anyhow, you need to plan your trip a little bit further and you have not so much flexibility, especially when you can't charge at home. So my tip is always look forward that you also can charge at home. Also, when you don't prefer it, there are also mobile charging stations. They're not so expensive. And even when they give you just a little bit of um, charging, like 10 kilowatts per night, it gives you more flexibility when you like to go quickly somewhere that you don't need to go for an external charging station where you need another 30, 35 minutes to charge. Um, to get your car, of course, full. But anyhow, you lose a little bit more time. It's, it's, it's a little bit more, um, I would say, comfortable to go to a gas station, yeah? So this is something you need to keep in mind. Infrastructure is getting better. Again, what is the advantage of electrifying your car? It's normally cheaper, yeah? As fuel, yeah? Fuel is getting more and more expensive, and especially when you have solar roofs and stuff like that, and you can, how cool is that, be very autark, when you take the sun and put it into your car and you're not paying for it. That, that's, of course, one of the biggest advantages you can have with an EV. So this directly refers into the fourth point, yeah? And this is the costs, yeah? So as I said, normally energy is a little bit cheaper as gasoline, yeah? That's correct. Um, it depends, of course, in the area are. When we are in Germany, energy is predominantly expensive, yeah? As I said in another video, we pay more or less for um, super benzene as a gasoline, we pay two euros. Um, if you charge um, your car, you take, pay 40 cents per kilowatt. But the consumption of um, an electrical car is normally less. Of course, it depends on your driving style and of course the build you're having, but you save a little bit money and it's still cheaper. If you live in a country where energy is anyhow cheap, like Ireland, Norway or wherever, you know, like then it's a no brainer to take an EV because that's much cheaper, even when you take a little bit more energy due to the fact that you have colder areas. Yeah. Um, what you need also take in time, and we're talking here always about pro and cons. Yeah? While luxury builds, like for example the Fisker Ocean one I'm having here, yeah, compared to the same build in a gasoline build, is cheaper yeah, when you buy it. The, say, entry cars, the EVs are a little bit more expensive. But they are coming a lot of bros against with an EV because you don't have so much maintenance. With the car, you know, like with an, 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 a normal built car, like a diesel or a fuel car, you have a lot of oils, liquids, which you need to fulfill, you know, like there could be damages on your engines and stuff like that. Due to the fact of the efficiency of the powertrain within an EV, you don't have this maintenance anymore. There's not too much things which can be get damaged. You don't have a gear shifting system, stuff like that. We need to get maintenance, yeah? If you um, use your Regen braking and sometimes you switch it off, you even, you know, like don't use too much of 
Um, the brakes, yeah, also very important is that you sometimes switch off the Regen because then the dust and the, the um, rust of your brakes will disappear and it lasts also a bit longer. Yeah? So the only thing which you're having with an EV which is a little bit more costly is the um, tires. The tires are getting a little bit more down quicker due to the size of an EV. It's normally more heavier and normally you have in an EV also a little bit more horsepower which then of course takes away from the tires um, a little bit more grip so that's you need to exchange a little bit more but in principle an EV is cheaper you also can at least in Europe sell your CO2 certificates you get money back and there are also some government um, uh, governmental sub subsidizes like for example the tax reduction in the US or we we don't need to tax our cars for you know like the street taxes we're having yeah in Germany you have something like uh, it's called Kfz-Steuer, yeah, so it means like you have an um, automotive um, tax. It's not when you buy the car, something you normally do um, 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 on a yearly basis, you pay taxes on. This is all not there for an EV. So you have a lot of savings around. Yeah, also a lot of companies offering like, for example, Fisker, if you buy a car till March, they give you one year free charging, which is then also a saver of money. Yeah. So normally an EV in principle is also not so cost effective, especially when you also charge it at home and you take the sun energy and fuel it into your car. Coming to one of the most important points, yeah, what about the user experience, yeah? So I like to start here a little bit like with the cons, yeah? Due to the fact that we are talking about new technology, you have a lot of starting issues, yeah? So I don't know if you heard about the EV, um, Kia EV9 has a lot of battery issues. Um, we had with the Porsche Taycan, which was also tested in my channel, we had an um, 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 uh, battery issue, yeah. So there are a lot of, you know, like starting stuff come in, but I have to say we had this also with old cars already, yeah. So, so this is not the biggest point. What is maybe also a little bit missing is the, um, which is an advantage also on the one hand side, but it's a disadvantage of the other side, this icons of, you know, like these old Ferraris, these AMG Mercedes, yeah, these loud, noisy cars, extroverted cars, like the Lamborghinis on this world, yeah. They lose a little bit like of their um, iconic status due to the fact that you don't have this engine sound anymore. There are a lot of sound chips generated, for example, here the Fisker Ocean 1, for example, sounds like a mothership of a UFO. Yeah? Um, I heard already Porsche's test drives like the Macan E, they have a little bit like a motor sound, yeah, a generic stuff like that. Anyhow, but you missed it. So these iconic features are a little bit like um, away. Anyhow, what is the experience? And I have to say there are a lot of advantages and these are the bros also with an EV. Because, you know, like you have a lot of new brands like Fisker or Seeker or Rivian or Tesla, which was a pioneer, you know, like came on the market with a lot of new technology advantages, which pushed this old school traditional industry to rethink that you as a customer are the most important guy to the party. Yeah? This is a big advantage, yeah? You get, with the connectivity, you get, for example, like preheating in the system. This is normally in every EV applicable, yeah? You can, you know, like um, exchange or change with your car, yeah? You have AI functions now in your car. You have new designs, like the Fisker design, I have to say, is just freaking outstanding, yeah? So this car is so beautiful and there are much more extroverted cool designs coming. So you have you have the advantage that also there's a bigger competition and you can choose more products for yourself, yeah? Then driving an EV, it's unbelievable cool because the power trunk, yeah? Also how you can accelerate with the car, but how silent it is, how this jumps, how this flies, yeah? How cool that works, yeah? Also, even in an SUV, how you stick on the ground because the battery gives you a lower level to the ground and you get much more performance from the car. Yeah? That's really outstanding. You have a lot of space in the car because you don't have the gearbox anymore, which you use a lot of space within the car. So you have a lot of space. It's rethinked and that's called I'm with an EV. So in principle, I have to say, um, an EV gives you a lot of 
advantages. A disadvantage is of course still that you need to make a proper blending. Again, we're talking maybe about range when people say, ooh, I'm not sure about the range. Yeah, it's very important that you look on your profile, that you look that you're taking the biggest battery. I always would say take the biggest battery because it is very important that you get the range here. Yeah? Um, even when it costs you a little bit more, but it gives you more flexibility. Yeah? So, so there are a couple of stuff, but anyhow, Think about, yeah, when you make a trip, how often you make trips, they are longer than 260, 300 miles. You always would do a break, eat maybe something. And if you have a proper charging station, then you know, normally easily can recharge your car between 30 to 50 minutes, up to 80% or 100%, depends of course on the build you're having and the acceleration of charging infrastructure you're having. And that's not too much, you know, like, because you would anyhow do a break somehow. So for the day-to-day -day usage, you have also a lot of advantage because infrastructure will be getting. So this is all I can say about driving a vehicle. Guys, would be also very eager to understand what you see as pros and also as cons driving an EV. Because this helps everybody watching this video or in the world to decide, you know, like, do I like to have an EV or not? What are the pros and cons? And also, I think it helps the manufacturer to get better with their job to support the message to get more EVs on the streets or not. That would be really eager. For me, I told you a lot of pros and cons. If I missed out something, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed that content. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like to enjoy another video of mine, otherwise we see each other next time. Thank you so much. Cheers, bye bye.